Okay, welcome to the CMC Markets Weekly Charting Analysis. Uh, my name is Jasper Lawler, your host for today. The webinar is scheduled to last about 30 minutes. Sometimes we'll go over a bit. I'll typically stop the recording, uh, but can always cover some extra questions if you have them. Feel free to, ans uh, to ask a question or make a comment anytime. Always more fun if it's interactive, but um, you know I'll, I'll um, try to respond as as quickly and as best I can. <coughs> We're just getting through the risk warnings on the, the screen here. I'd advise you to take heed of. So the talk at the moment is uh, an asset class that I don't always focus on in these webinars, but I'm going to touch on briefly. <coughs> Is, uh, is well, it's the bond market really, uh, specifically gilts. It's not one of uh, the most popular products traded in um, CMC markets. Not especially sure why. It may be a bit more niche, arguably. Sometimes not as much volatility. Um, but there is a bit at the moment. So I typically have them up on my screen down here. Just these kind of three main ones. This is our proxy for the German. They will these are all 10-year bonds, 10-year government bonds, Euro Bund, UK GILT, and the US 10-year Treasury note. As you can see, Bund's kind of flat today. Treasury note, obviously, you know, we haven't moved into the US session yet, but pretty flat. Uh, GILT's selling off quite a lot um, for a Monday morning. Let's pull up the chart here and you'll, you'll start to see why. I have posted this on the chart forum. So this being the daily chart, but it makes a bit more sense if I show you the weekly chart. <coughs> so here are our highs over here in 2011. We obviously had a big sharp rise in, in yields there. And we've pretty much just reached that old resistance level and um, formed a fairly classic looking double top pattern and we've rolled over through the, the neckline and uh, as of now we're, we're sitting on about a 61.8 percent retracement of this this rally up um, that basically uh, you know I've just placed if I could drop down to the daily charts again this is good old Brexit <coughs> uh, the day before and uh, this is the day after and this was this whole move higher is basically just because um, the Bank of England had some pretty dour forecasts on what would happen to the UK economy, still does, um, if we voted to leave the EU. And so the expectation was that once we did vote to leave the EU, that the Bank of England were going to come in with a bunch of stimulus, possibly involving buying government bonds. <coughs> that did happen. That happened on August 4th. So that's this big move up here. And actually what happened is we topped out about a week later. That was pretty much the top. Did a little false breakout over here, tried it again, tried it again, and on this, whatever that is, fifth time of trying, the market realised there was a distinct amount of selling going on here. Uh, overcame the buying, and we've rolled over ever since, and quite what's been quite a sharp decline now. So this, you know, when you when you get a sharp move in any market, it sort of um, rubs off on on risk sentiment a bit. <coughs> Theoretically, bonds are something you buy um, for, you know, as a more conservative investment. Uh, so, if bonds are going down, typically, you know, what you would expect is that equities move higher uh, because they're a riskier investment. So, people are moving out of um, safer investments into riskier ones. That's not so much the case at the moment, um, just because a lot of the reason people have been buying stocks is because quote unquote it's the only game in town as in bond yields are so low and our savings account interest is so low that you can't really make money anywhere else <coughs> obviously except with the exceptions of non-financial assets properties and um, classic cars and fine art and all the rest of it and all those prices are massively pushed higher that you know we're in bubble territory for a lot of assets uh, riskier assets because you can't make money in the kind of traditional way of um, in the money markets or um, in bond markets so <coughs> you know that's where we are so as a result um, the fact that yields are going higher so 
uh, yields go inversely to prices. So these these are prices. Prices going down, uh, yields, interest rates going back up. Uh, that makes stocks relatively less attractive. You know, the dividends that you would earn on stocks still higher than these yields, but the gap is smaller now. Um, so making stocks relatively less attractive than they were just a couple of weeks ago in comparison to bond markets. Let me know if you want a bit more explanation on that, but just go, go some way to explain why we're seeing a bit of a decline in equities and why we've kind of been a bit of a... Yeah, this As this decline in bond markets has been happening, we haven't seen any massive decline in stocks, but we have seen a bit of a range taking place close to the highs of the year. Uh, so let's... Uh, well, I'll start with US stocks. This is our weekly chart. Always best to, you know, typically you want to do a bit of... Um, bit of your charting you know on a Sunday on a Monday just get a f get a read on where you think you know what do what do you what what color do you expect this week's candlestick to be in the most simple terms um, <clears throat> you know because that should form the basis of how you do your trading this week incredibly simple way to put it but really that's you know it clears up a lot if you, you know if you think to this week if you're looking at this weekly chart this week is going to be a down week obviously you want to be looking for short-term selling opportunities vice versa if you think this is going to be a green candle this week um, you know you're looking for buys <coughs> it's not too straightforward it often isn't th as to which one of those candles it's going to be because we're basically in a range as I've mentioned here in a very simple chart forum note for one two three four five weeks We've pretty much been tr capped between, you know, this old resistance here and this old resistance here. Mm. On these, so these weekly levels are defining the short-term range. So we drop drop down to our daily chart, and we find a bit of a, sh a, a chart pattern here. So we've got this this triangle in place, which has broken to the downside. So first sign of weakness is the breakdown. Got a reversal off that long-term support, as you might expect and then reverse somewhere in the vicinity of this trend line you know also the breakdown here obviously we had this this is the daily candle and uh, you can see that where it took out the low of that day you know that's where we've fallen away from again so a breakdown a touch of a long-term support hitting that resistance again so naturally you'd expect maybe another go at this support uh, but whether that support gives way or not is um, is it's harder to tell the evidence it would suggest it will um, to me, it looks like a lot of selling came into the market. Prices reacted, um, but you know the big sellers. You know they don't want to be selling down here. They want to average in, and this to me looks like distribution. We're in a bull market, so that could easily be wrong. I should qualify myself there, but that's that's the way it's looking at the moment. Big sell, consolidation, distribution, uh, people trying to buy the bounce. People trying to, the people that were selling up here don't want to sell here, but they're selling at that long-term previous resistance, and eventually the market's going to give way to the downside. That's that's the way it's looking to me. <coughs> now it does look slightly different in the UK because you know while the US stocks have been down for two weeks, we actually posted an all-time record high in the FTSE 100. Obviously, the pound playing a big role in that. I'm not going to go over all of that again because I'm, I'm sure you guys have read that ad nauseum at this point that the uh, the weaker pound is helping UK stocks but this is the short term chart here so I want to kind of go over uh, what we were kind of looking at here this being the daily chart so it, obviously the trend lines always go off a bit when you're switching between 4 hours and daily this happens in every chart package um, but that's that trend line we've got to close down there below that trend line And so we're down here. We move below this 50 period moving average on the four hour chart, bit of a sign that the uh, the short term trend is is turning lower, as was the break of that trend line. So we've got a breakdown and a bit like US charts, uh, US markets, we've got this long term resistance here, which has then acted as support on the downside. So it was, um, you know, I put that as the as the previous peak. Uh, but obviously, you know these levels down here, significant too. So we've got a, we've had a rebound off there, but that rebound stalled at. Sorry, I'm flipping between time frames a lot. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try and. So this was the low here. So a bit like that other chart where we had the low and then we broke down through it. We extended the low and then we came back and tested where we broke down. 
that also happened to be if you've drawn your Fibonacci's um, now we'll go to the shot where we had the 61.8% fib. So, you know, Fibonacci's, they come in for a lot of criticism. You know, you just say, oh, if you plot enough levels, one of them will work. <clears throat> I tend to just stick with the, the, the last two here, the 61.8 and the 78.6, because they're the deeper retracements that are, um, you know, if you, if, you know the, the shallower the retracement, the, you know, the, the bigger the chance that the, you know, the, the you're wrong and then it extends lower. Um, obviously, you can miss 50% retracements if you only wait for these two, but um, you know, by by its nature, if you're waiting for the bigger pullback, if you're having your, you know, if you're cutting your losses, if the market makes a new high and it's no longer in a downtrend up here, you know, that distance between 61.8 and the highs is obviously smaller than if you're using a 50 or a 38. So that's what we've got here, <coughs> and obviously the market's in a bull market, so there's a slight tendency to to try and push higher, but it's only made it as far as that daily low and the 61.8 and this you know this 50 day, 50 period on the on the four hour um, kind of playing its part in in this sell off as well moving averages it's really a personal preference thing um, you know how how quick or slow do you want your moving average to kind of reflect the change in the trend you know you can use a 50 hour moving average on the on the four hour or, the, or, or even on the hourly chart as a change in the short term trend or you could use equally you know a 5 or a 10 day moving average they they are basically the same thing it's just a matter of how you're looking at them <coughs> i mean i say the same thing they can capture the same thing so this to me is a confirmation of that judgment from the other from the US 30 chart that you know we 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 broke we've taken out some some lows here we've pulled back and it looks like we're, we're we're angling for another push lower and one target to look out for is this low down here which lines up quite nicely with this 61.8 mine says 100 and just because of the way i've used the fibs it says minus but you know that's more like the 161.8 percent fib extension so again we're, we're pushing into this longer term uh resistance turn support so obviously it can hold, but a break, you know, I don't think there's too much stopping us from getting down to these kinds of levels. Uh, maybe even this big daily low down here, which would basically put us in that sort of six eight hundred type vicinity. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Let's have a switch across to Germany. The range is even more clear cuts in this uh, Germany 30 chart. Again, this is the weekly chart. And arguably, we were still part of a trend during these three candles. It's not entirely fair, but we haven't gone anywhere outside of those three candles. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, onto our 13th week of trading in a range in the Germany 30. So, um, you know, this there's there's not a trend taking place, so adjust your, your, you know, your trading accordingly. On the shorter term, You'd expect coming up into these levels, you know, maybe to get another reaction again. And if not there, you'd expect up at the top of the range equally. Down at this low is a bit f bit close to the middle of the range for my tastes. Uh, but these lows down here, down to this low, down to this low, still pretty much part of the range. And you could expect some sort of reaction there. Worth looking at how the momentum is really compressed. <coughs> so depending on which which trend line we get a break from, um, looks like it could be the the upper line that breaks, which would suggest a push higher. That would obviously go counter to what's happening in the other markets. Um, but we've not seen such kind of an obvious kind of breakdown in uh, the German market. It's just been trading sideways. over to the FX market plenty of ranges happening at the moment so um, euro obviously the most clear cut advantage this is just the short term range that I kind of zoomed in on here sign you know signs that uh, we you know this is last week was quite a nice trend in the euro um, this this could easily continue but we've come into an oversold area just about 
and we're coming into this um, this daily swing low down here. So already getting a bit of reaction before getting to the, that area. Um, you know, but I would say you know this this trend line and then obviously that big Brexit spike low um, being the kind of two areas that we want to look for the um, kind of lowest risk possibilities when it comes to a reversal um, higher back into the range and um, you know but to being open to the idea that actually maybe this trend continues to the downside um, what evidence do we have that that's happening just that there's been some lower lower highs being put in on the on the weekly chart you know the fact that we just keep edging slightly lower and the lows are you know that was quite a big volatility breakdown there you know so if you're calling that the what kind of range that we've been looking at you know kind of equivalent looking range that we were looking at in the um, the stock markets we've seen a breakout of that range now this is big support down here but um, you know that's the kind of volatility you need to sustain a break lower so I think the the mentality here is you know looking out for these two support uh, areas to work looking for some reaction off there um, and then you know trading that breakout to the push higher on the short term or um, looking for pullbacks for the touch of that support if I, I may as well go down to the shorter time frame kind of say what I'm talking about here uh, three hours you know we're looking like you know we want to see something like down to here and then you know up here this kind of reaction then a pullback you know obviously or or this and then trading that or a pullback for for signs that these support areas are working but obviously if we don't get a batch of that we stall again around 110 which is a big psychological level which is kind of where we are at the moment um, if 110 proves a bit of a barrier and we start pushing down um, yeah I think that will most likely happen we'll get down to one of these areas but if we, again we fail at 110 um, it's a good sign that the downtrend is is picking up some momentum and we're actually not going to hold the support so it's one of those where yep there's a support we want to look to buy for it but you know um, you can just chuck your limit order to buy in there now, that's certainly um, a way many people can do it and you can make money um, but you know, an, an alternative if you've got the time to look at the charts is to wait for some sort of reaction and uh, and trade the break or the the pullback from that break. Sterling obviously um, uh, was coming in for some early selling today. Um, again, difficult difficult chart to be trading, but a bit of a kind of triangle pattern showing itself here from that extreme low thing is this low I mean it's all uh, in our charts it's actually not bad because it's it's basically drawn from 120 so our charts actually a bit below 120 if you were to assume that the low was 120 on that day actually this trend line works slightly better yeah it's it's yeah so so you're calling that low 120 up through there and you can see that we're we've kind of edged below it and now we're tracking back down again so you know hasn't been heavy selling obviously a, a good dose of uncertainty no one's really sure if we deserve to push sterling below 121 particularly if the bank of england um you know, do they really have the ability to cut rates again um <clears throat> you know I, I think that's pretty debatable given the current economic scenario particularly if inflation is is rising we'll get a better idea of that tomorrow when CPI comes out uh, for the US and the UK um, obviously the you know the, the other reason to push sterling lower is a uh, is a US rate rise but uh, you know I think that's that's already factored in with sterling at 120 I mean to justify a move much lower it's 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 the political uncertainty in the UK and it's the the prospect of a, another rate cut um, you know, I don't. Th I don't see the Fed getting aggressive enough to really justify the, the sterling down at these levels. We've known that the Fed's been ke keying up for a rate rise this whole year. Um, <clears throat> 
So I don't, I, you know, I think that's it's hard to justify moves lower basically from the dollar side unless US data really starts to ramp up and next year suddenly we're expecting you know rate rises every couple of months but that doesn't really look to be the case at this point yeah got a question on dollar yen I'll, um, I'll get to that right now Richard if that's alright um, typically just cover those three major pairs if there's any other currencies anyone wants me to have a look at just give me a shout I will happily do so uh, so you see, Richard and everyone else, um, this is our this is our daily chart. I'm sure you've all got something very similar on there. We we had that triangle pattern. We've broken the the top line of that triangle pattern, and we've run into this is all super simple technical analysis at this point. We had a triangle. We got a breakout from the triangle, but we've stalled at um, you know this this resistance area at the the 104. Uh, which was one of the peaks that we used for the triangle pattern. So that will often happen. Uh, to me, the pullback has been minimal. That that That's pretty much a bearish engulfing candlestick there. I mean, ideally you want to see a bit of a kind of pop above the high um, to make a higher high too. But the body engulfs that previous body. That's a bearish pattern at a resistance. And it failed the next week pretty much. <coughs> We've pushed back into those uh, resistance areas at plus 104. We haven't had the, the close above that peak yet, um, but to me, you know, maybe if you include this, this little short-term trend line here through, um, seems to be working quite well from those pre, you can even extend it back here a little bit. Sometimes the these um, internal trend lines work quite well. That seems to be defining the trend. So to my mind, I don't think the price is going to pull back much further than this rising trend line or the again I've got this the 50 period average uh, moving average on the four hour chart going um, you know which has kind of worked quite well here you know I think uh, uh, to, I don't think the price should if it's going to break 104.30 you know in the short term should go much lower than here you know if we do get another pullback to 103 again then it just I think the breakout maybe is less likely um, but again you've got to assess the you know, if this doesn't work, then you know, still, you know, still keep confidence in your long-term. I mean, I say yours. In my case, I'm looking at this as being a 104.30 possible breakout here, just because we haven't had much of a pullback yet, um, and we've got that breakout, that triangle pattern where the projection should be higher. Um, so, kind of base case, you know, expecting that longer-term push higher. You know, so if this first support doesn't work, then you obviously, you know, you reassess and look at the next support. Below that 103, then I think that probably changes the picture somewhat. And, um, you know, it looks like we'd hold the range should we get through there. You know, the the range being not so much the triangle, obviously, but more like this um, sort of 100 to 104 time range. Hope that makes sense. So we just got, yeah, we've got a few minutes left just to, to go over the commodities here. Something, something before I before I do get to the commodities and probably worth mentioning, obviously the main economic event this week probably would be the um, the European Central Bank. I say probably just because they're not likely to actually do anything, but we are we do have um, we have had. Eurozone inflation today, you know, rising inflation, increasingly a bit of a concern, and that we did have those rumours um, a week or two ago that the ECB had been discussing tapering their QE program. So if you get that QE tapering um, alongside the Bank of Japan potentially tapering their program, focusing just on on yields rather than the number of assets they're buying. Um, higher inflation in the UK arguably preventing the Bank of England from doing more and the Fed raising rates is all a picture of um, central banks pulling back a bit um, so that would definitely be one to, one to look for central banks pulling back you know when they've been one of the major forces behind uh, the low yields that have made stocks more attractive um, then uh, <coughs> yeah that would be it that would probably be a 
a bearish sign for the market if we get some extra indication from them that uh, they have in fact been considering tapering. They'll get questioned on it. I would imagine that Meryl Dugri will probably give a quite a straight answer to say that they weren't actually considering tapering. Um, what people are actually, the, the, the general market consensus at the moment um, is that they're going to extend the life of their bond purchase program. And they're going to have to make a decision on that sooner rather than later because the, uh, the, the end of the program is March. But I would say it's probably not going to be this month. You know, it's more likely to be December when they offer some sort of idea on that. Nonetheless, the fact that we had that big sell-off in the euro did certainly combine with um, more hawkish talk with the Fed, but obviously um, happened in the week pre this ECB meeting as well. Anyway, so now I will go to uh, oil firstly. <coughs> So again, um, again, just looking at a long-term level, you know, this is at the highs of the year. Um, we got a couple of false breaks on the day, and we pulled down. We had a, a three days of declines. So then, if you do go down to this short time frame that I had on, um, using this peak, we dropped back from the the sixty-one point eight. Um, you know, if you, uh, I'm struggling to like get hold of the. If you use the, if you use the peak up here, we haven't actually got to. Um, we we came just shy of the 61.8 level there. So maybe some room, you know, if we are looking for this long-term level to hold, maybe some scope for market to to roll up, roll over again up here. Um, but at the moment, it's looking relatively strong. I mean, I, you know, I think you, you sort of, barring that little false breakdown, generally the support level is holding quite well. So, uh, people have been buying into this support. Uh, this little short-term drift down seems to have, seems to have kind of ended. So just look maybe for anything up here because we are we are basically at a long-term resistance. Um, obviously, we're in a we're in an uptrend, but just uh, keep an you know keep an eye on that resistance holding. Uh, so we've got that bold line in itself. Just draw that from the old highs and those two fibs as possible areas that the the market could roll over from. You know, so it's in this sort of zone we need to look out for um, up through there, and it looks like the trend should um, should continue. Gold again iron up a long term level this time on the uh, this time it's a support it's the twelve fifty we had a hefty sell off in gold um the week before last um so now we're we're back down at this this spike low and it's also the twelve fifty round number doesn't seem to be much of a, a bounce. But at the moment, you know, you can see on the short level that people keep, the 12.50 um, keeps getting defended. You know, this is it right here. You know, this is the, um, the first rebound that we got after after spiking low, spiking lower than 12.50. We never quite got above that spike high here. We did get above these highs. So, you know, the fact that the, the, f the highs keep kind of drifting lower doesn't give me massive confidence but at the moment we're still seeing every time we get down somewhere in there people are buying up and this 78.6 worked on the one occasion I think that was when we had non-farm no there was I can't quite remember what's causing that large volatile day but nonetheless 12.50 a big key area for gold to me, the fact that we're at the highs keep kind of drifting lower doesn't give me a lot of confidence it's going to hold. So I'm not necessarily looking for that level to hold much longer. And I think we probably get another push down to this one, uh, 1208. You know, should that level give way, you know, look for the short term pullbacks to, 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 um, to ride that down here. There really isn't too much in the way of support between. 12.50 and sort of 12.10. This is potentially $40 extra on the downside here. So uh, yeah, I think that's um, 
that's it. I've not seen. Oh, okay, Euro Sterling. I'll, I will go over that then. We've got um, a few a few seconds left on the official recording, but I'll extend that a little bit. Obviously, you know, Euro Sterling. Um, more more being driven by by the pound than the euro side of things at the moment because the euro had quite a decent sell off last week but you're not really seeing that particularly reflected in, in euro sterling because you know the sell off in the pound was just uh, that much more dramatic <coughs> so um a good pair to trade when you're trying to kind of avoid um trading you know, just the dollar and and what the Fed are going to do. Um, this much more story on on the weakness in UK politics and the uncertainty. You know, obviously today, if you read my morning note and, and Michael's morning note, um, been you know there's there's lots of kind of political strife at the moment. Um, Chancellor Philip Hammond apparently um, trying to urge us to you know, to pay the into the EU budget and just to maintain the, the EU passporting rights and, and put immigration on the back burner. Obviously, the people that were favouring Brexit, not such a fan of that idea. <coughs> so there's a bit of a, a tussle going on inside government, creates uncertainty, and, you know, the, the, the pound is the, is the whipping boy for, for that. So trend is clearly higher, but obviously this, uh, the 90 level... Um, and the you know the all time not the all time so the um, the multi year high back at um, at uh, what was that actually at ninety basically ninety one mm. it's the key levels that we're kind of kind of looking at here but it's similar to the um, the sterling chart in the you know with that you know crazy sell off day that we had hard to kind of really pinpoint uh, what levels to use you know if you use 92 because you know again who, who lots of in the FX market it's not a centralized exchange no one you know there's different interpretations as to what the high actually was if you use 92 as a conservative high then we're kind of pushing into a um, potential triangle top roundabout here um, but I I wouldn't necessarily be too confident about selling into this pair just at the moment. You know I think I think it's more a situation where you know you want to be uh, buying on supports. So the obvious support number one would be down here at the kind of the bottom of this range that we've been in since that big that big buy up day. And if that gives way, then I think we're just looking at, you know, the um, the resistance pre pre that day. So there are two 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 levels to look at there. You know, if we do get a break through this triangle, we're getting a bit of a breakout. So then start looking for maybe pullbacks from the from the breakout. I hope that helps. Okay, well, good luck with trading this week, everyone. Yeah, watch out for the ECB midweek. We've got quite a lot of inflation data coming out for those trading the, the currencies. And, uh, you know, keep an eye on this bond market sell off, particularly in the gilts, uh, because if that continues, that could also could also weigh on equities, those those higher yields reducing the attractiveness of, of um, stock markets. And, and it, whenever there's a, a sharp sell off, that rattles investors a bit. So that'd be a reason for stocks to not to do so well. Thanks again. Jeff Lawler signing out.